Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to share with you this really neat visualization tool that I come across. So the Vossa VOS Viewer, uh, which they describe as visualizing scientific landscapes. And so basically what this is, is a tool where you can upload information which could be uh, bibliographic information from a literature review. That's what we're going to be looking at. Um, but it can take other kinds of text data as well. And it can draw these maps. So it can draw network diagrams uh, showing different relationships and linkages. Uh, it can also do some heat mapping as well. There's a really nice way of being able to add a little bit more emphasis uh, and really kind of some slightly more rigorous in some ways uh, quantitative elements to a literature review by looking at how um, keywords or articles or research links together from a getting a perspective of a particular topic across the world. It also can be really helpful. So we can see just here as the images have scrolled through, uh, we can see a heat map with various different universities. So we can do a particular search on a topic and we can get a map that looks like this, seeing the linkages between particular institutions or particular authors uh, or particular keywords and how they all fit together. So let's get started. Uh, and we're not going to go to the getting started tab, but certainly for you when you get going, it's going to be a good plan. Uh, we're going to jump in. If we go to download, and so this tool is really nice and it's available for Windows and Mac and they've said other. I kind of take that as Linux. I didn't really explore what that is. Uh, we are going to be installing it on a Windows machine. So we click here, we download, it's a zip file. We unzip it and run the executable. Depending on how your machine is set up, you may find that it asks you to update or download Java if Java is not presently installed on your system. Um, this is a fairly small, um, not particularly intrusive download. So for some of you, it will already be set up. For others, you may need to just hit a link and get the latest version of Java in there as well. So once we've done that, we're going to have a viewer that looks like this. So this is where we will be building our visualizations. I'm going to be showing you an example. Before that though, uh, if we're going to create a map, if we just hit create, we get a little window that comes up. We're going to be creating a map based on bibliographic data, and that means we're going to need to go and get some bibliographic data. I'm going to get mine from PubMed, uh, but it works from a few different places. And in fact, if we hit next, uh, we can see Web of Science, Scopus, Dimension Lenses, PubMed. Uh, it will also take in your EndNote file. So if you've assembled references from a number of different places, you've got them in one of those reference managers, it can do that. Uh, also works with APIs. I've not yet tried this. There is a, there's a lot to this tool. I'm still pretty new to it, uh, but I'm also pretty excited about it. So I really wanted to share it, really get the message out about how good and useful this is. So we are going to get some PubMed. So let's go over to PubMed. Okay, so here we are on PubMed. And the search term that I've put in is bench press. So I am a long time power lifter and I thought that I would have a look what have we got on PubMed about bench press. I am not doing any kind of filtering or messing around with this. I'm just doing a really simple this is bench press here's all the results. So for you if you had a specific thing you may do some filtering, you may adjust the years, you may make some other adjustments here to um get a more refined data set. But for us, we've got bench press. We're going to hit save. I want to save all the results and I'm going to save them as a PubMed file. So there's a few different versions uh, that we can do our saving. We're going to save as a PubMed file. We hit create. So we are going to be entering a bibliographic data file. We're going to hit next. Uh, we are using PubMed. So we'll click on PubMed. We'll go and find the file. So here is the file that we exported from PubMed. Uh, we hit next and I am going to be interested in looking at keywords. So for this particular thing, organizations is not particularly interesting, neither is authors. We're going to look at co-occurrence and we're going to look at the keywords. So as you see, there's a whole lot of different options here. 
Um, we can go by authors, organizations, the way that we measure linking between different uh, papers can be done in different ways. Uh, at your back here, we can even add a thesaurus. So if there are different terms that mean the same thing, we can group them together. Uh, but again, just doing this very simply, so we're going to go co-occurrence, um, just taking the default, uh, not going to add a thesaurus. We're going to hit next. Uh, we can specify number of occurrences of a keyword. And so depending on how big your file is will depend on how much you want to bump this up. Uh, number of keywords, that seems fine. There's a whole lot of options. Uh, we can see that they're starting to appear there. We can go through. If there was something that just seemed to be there that didn't fit, we could untick it. And then we're going to hit finish. And it does a little bit of thinking. And then it creates this beautiful map for us. So we've got three different tabs, the network, overlay, and density. And so this is probably the most useful one uh, for this particular search. In the middle, we've got the circles uh, representing the biggest, uh, so most commonly seen keywords that are linking up with bench press. I'm maybe a little bit surprised to see humans. I guess maybe maybe that's kind of an idiosyncrasy of PubMed. We might we might exclude that. We've got mail, and if you have looked at sports science, you will see that quite commonly they will do uh, experiments where there's just a small small sample, and they will often control for gender. So it might be males who have not trained and are aged 18 to 25 or there will be some limits and uh, gender is often one of them young adult probably not surprising a lot of uh, research is done with groups of students resistance training certainly not surprising when we're on resistance training we can see all the different offshoots there um, so as we kind of go around the circle there is things related to the body, things related to exercise, uh, things related to different measurement methods. Also quite interesting when we come out to the outside where we get these little ones that don't really link up. And some aren't surprising. So out here, tennis, I could imagine there's probably a paper, does bench press improve your tennis or something along those lines where they recruited tennis players and got some bench pressing. A little bit more surprised with this one. So if you are if you are at all gym oriented, the deltoids are your shoulders, and shoulders play a big part in bench pressing. I'm a little bit surprised that that is out there and not somewhere. And particularly, we see here is our pec muscles, which is your chest, uh, very important for your bench pressing. Might have expected that to be a little bit larger as well. Uh, but surprised by the deltoid. So certainly we can see there's some really interesting stuff here. And that's really me just as a, I guess, educated amateur. This isn't my area of research, but I have read many, many articles, a lot of research about it because it's just something that I love. So that was network visualization. If we have a look at the overlay, now what we've got is down here we can see color key by year. So darkest to the oldest through to yellow being the newest. And is there a pattern? Maybe a little bit. We can see that the there was a period there around that kind of 2015 with these light greens where there was a whole lot around strength training and performance. Slightly earlier on, there's a few. So what have we got? We've got football in there. Maybe a little bit more application work. And then the yellows. The yellows most recent so they don't necessarily have quite as many linkages um, but this can be pretty interesting you could imagine for your domain looking at how things have changed over time and maybe we would stretch out and some disciplines would certainly go back before 2005 and we could see how how this pattern has changed over time off on the side here, there's a whole lot of different things we can adjust. Uh, again, just for this introductory video, I'm not going to worry about those. But when you start playing with this, you'll find all manner of different things. Over here, we can take a screenshot, add this. This could be part of our literature review in maybe paper. It could go into a conference presentation. There's so much to talk about. And we've also got a density visualization. For this particular one, I don't know whether it's all that interesting. We've got resistance training and humans in the middle. It's not, it's not super interesting as we kind of go around the outside. 
maybe just without the lines there, we can see some of these terms a little bit more clearly. So just a different way of being able to visualize that same data. So rather than the network doing a heat map instead. So this has been the VOS or VOS viewer. Uh, I've been really impressed. I've only been playing with it for about a week or so. Uh, but if you're doing any kind of research at all, I think you're going to find it really, really helpful. Really add something. If you've got a conference presentation coming up, certainly something you can add in there that I think will impress people. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit like, please subscribe to the channel. It helps support me producing more content.